Uh, hello, this is a note on using um, using the rate of star path radar trainer to practice doing radar position fixes. And uh, that they are typically done in uh, three different ways, either with uh, range and bearing to a single point, or two bearings, or usually the most accurate is range and bearing uh, range and bearing to two, I mean, uh, two bearings to two different points. That's the most accurate one. And, uh, okay, good, it's here. All right, so I'm going to use, and, and it doesn't matter, we can do this anywhere, frankly, but I'm just going to use the default version, the default layout of Radar Trainer, and uh, it also just shows some tricks you can do with that. So here is the, uh, the default area, which happens to be uh, the entrance to Rich Passage, which is, you know, we don't claim this is a realistic, you know, absolute realistic uh, uh, presentation, either by chart or by simulator, but that's the area that it represents. And in fact, that's a real area. And normally we do these problems with these charts. So you would go to Rich Passage, uh, Washington, let's see, I think it's this one. This is a default one. And we do all of our course plotting on, on this, uh, this type of chart, which you can print out as a chartlet that matches exactly what's in what's being simulated but in this case I'm gonna use the radar I'm gonna use this like real this blown up radar view to take to figure out where is my vessel where's my ship right now um, uh, using just the radar measurements of the land and so that's what we're gonna oops not that and I'm not gonna use those charts um, I'm going to oh wait I'm sorry I'm doing the wrong thing um, what I want to do is a uh, chart view. Okay. What I want to do is just set up a, uh, I'll set up a vessel somewhere in here and then stop it and then we'll figure out where, it, where it's actually located. And that also teaches a little bit about the radar trainer itself. So let's put a target somewhere in here. And the way you would do that is would be set vessels. That's down here, set vessels. So I set the vessel, and for now, let's we, right now we have our own center vessel here. That's us, the ship that's moving, and here's a target coming after us. Let's just remove all vessels, and then we're going to take one vessel, and we don't care if it's a ship or a little speedboat now because we're not going to be moving. Um, these differences between these are just how fast they can maneuver. Let's just take this guy and drag him over and put him, let's say we'll just put him right here, for example, right there. Now, we want to figure out where is that target. You know, I'm going to now just look at radar from that area. Okay, that's done. We're done. And the speed is zero. That's perfect. He's just parked there. And you see there's his, there's his scan. And, you know, as the radar goes up, he can see different. He can see this headland down here you know and so forth so and you can see this beach so see that's what's being seen over here oh let me go in there oh no not up I want to go down okay so there's the radar view oh, that's too much but then the other thing too generally I would say it's almost always true it's best to have a heading sensor plugged into your uh, plugged into your radar and then you can use the uh, north up mode and in the north up mode your, uh, your radar is oriented towards the chart. So you see we're sweeping around and we're just looking at that. But we don't know where we are on the chart. Like for example, here's, here's, a, here's a chart and we're somewhere in here. Uh, is that right? Yeah, somewhere in here. And we want to find out, we want to find out where we are. So that's this Bainbridge Island Reef. Oh, okay. So presumably, I don't know. Maybe that's this. Maybe maybe that little buoy is this one here. Okay. So now that that's what our job is. But we'll we'll find all that out very shortly. So let's go to the let's go to the radar view, and then uh, start uh, trying to figure out where we are. And so the first thing to do is let's just take a look at the lay of the land. Um, let me go a little further. That's that way. Am I in head? I'm in uh, north up. North up. I have this headland. Let me look at the chart again. Again, your navigation is always bouncing back below, 
be you know looking at what's the chart look like and what do I see on the radar screen and I'm trying to understand and understand both of them now there's another trick you can do that's a big big valuable trick so look at this this is we're seeing some land down here some land here and it looks like a buoy here we're stopped we're stopped so if this were actually a target it'd be moving so it's obviously a buoy or a beacon of some kind but here's another and here's an e-chart program now we don't directly use this in the radar course but there's no reason you couldn't it's a free program you can download it and you can load the charts all US charts are free so you can practice with that so what what you might do is um, you can go on here well we don't know where we are yet so let's first of all try to figure out where we are now one one quick and dirty method and I say dirty because if that's a buoy we're not sure you know we're not sure where the buoy is but we could guess that we could guess that that is uh, that's this buoy you see here's a sharp headland over here that's a sharp headland you know and then here's this this beach along here so we can assume that's that but we also don't know for sure that that's in the right place we're going to kind of find that out here in a minute but um, so let's just do that first and and you would just say we will turn on both the range and bearing and we'll go out here and just say what's the bearing to that to that buoy the bearing to that buoy is 269 and that's a true heading now because I'm in the north up mode I'm in the north up mode so that's 269 and now I want to find out how far away it is so I have to oh, I got to expand out so it's a uh, so we're that buoy so I'll tell you we know our position now if that buoy happens to be in the right spot right and so that is what is that distance that's a 0.6 miles in direction 269 okay so we can go back to our chart back to our chart and it's a 0.6 miles in 269 now I can't move lines around here so what I have to do is something like here and that's true so let me just see am I measuring true yeah these are true uh, yeah 270 oh, oh there's 269 and what oh let me just uh, I'm using the, the mine the, oh, okay let me just escape and get out of here okay so let me go back to the radar what did I find is 0.6 miles in direction 269 so I'm assuming this is a target I'm going to make a route then I'm going to create a route this is just you would just plot this with your parallel rulers they probably even easier so I'm going over here to 269 I just want that direction 269 and I'm gonna stop it then I'm gonna come back this way and I'm coming back a direct uh, a distance of 0.6 0.6 oh really Oh no no excuse me I've just got to get the direction on here points I've got to okay so there's the direction there's the direction I can reverse this if I want to make it look nicer okay yeah reverse it yes okay so, well, well anyway so I'm I'm on this line that from my ship uh, my ship is somewhere out here and I'm viewing that in direction 269 and it, it is and it's a point six miles away so let me just go here and just say yes and now I gotta come out point six point six right there bang okay so and I'm gonna drop a mark oh, uh, oh, oh I can't drop a mark exactly there I'll just drop it out here somewhere right and then I'll just move it up here so that's my that's my position right now so if I wanted to uh, that in other words that's one quick and rough dirty position of a, of a radar fix like that now let's go let's go more in other words that's a latitude and longitude and actual position now let's check some other ways to find our position back on the radar for one thing I can take uh, this is a pretty sharp knob here I could just go over and find out how far am I away from this edge right and I just expand this let's see expand this on out expand this on out to right there and that's 1.17 so I'm 1.17 miles off of that point 1.17 miles off of that point so I go back to my chart and uh, so one thing I and and there's 
different ways you can plot this on an electronic chart depending on what tools you have but in this case an easy way is you just drop a mark here drop a mark and then I go into the properties of the mark and extended properties I'm going to add a range ring to it of a distance of what is it 1.17 1.17 so uh, okay that's that ah look at that pretty good so we're getting confident so in other words this this measurement right here forget the bearing to the forget this buoy business right EBL just uh, just forget this EBL with well, this VRM told us that we are 1.17 miles off of this headland so what that tells us back on our chart where's our chart that we're somewhere on this red ring we don't know where so if, if I hadn't even done the buoy's not even there I know I'm here somewhere on this one now it's a little bit tricky to take a, a distance off of this shoreline because it's kind of like where do you where do you say you're doing it but way down here there's another like a clear point that we could use down here somewhere so let's look in the radar and see what we see on that and um, what we're seeing there is um, what range are we on 1.5 let's go up a little bit more it's interesting what we're seeing there this is always a problem you have to do with radar you have to interpret see it's not going to be a mirror image a plot it's going to be the what what is the radar reflection here and um, if I look at that let me come back to this it's probably you know from a radar point of view we're certainly not looking at the land out here we're probably looking at this area right here so we could probably uh, say something like this this corner here is probably this something like right here not out here or down on the water but maybe more like there so let's just do that let's measure the distance to that okay so what have we got then um, uh, okay I'm back on the radar and I've got my radar here's my EBL I'm just going to expand it on out to about oh something like that that's 1.42 miles 1.4 so we're 1.42 off of what we're thinking is about right here so let me go in here drop a mark here right there go in here put a properties and go in and um, uh, extended uh, one range ring one one point four two nautical miles okay bang Ah, look at that so we're beginning to know where we are so it looks like that turns out it looks like the buoy is in the right spot so first okay so what did we do we first of all found a crude position crude because we don't know the buoy is in the right spot but and then we just did range and bearing range and bearing from one item alone and we thought we were here now we did then we did we could identify this peak very nicely we could guess pretty intelligently where we were looking at what we saw in the radar image down here namely that little corner right there that's practice you have to do with radar judging what you're seeing from what's on the on the chart and then we intersect those two ranges and that's a very accurate fix and those two are really pretty well agreeing with each other now let's go back to do um, another sort of uh, one other type of fix that you could do let's go in and just shut off the electronic uh, the variable range marker shut it off and turn on the electric bearing line electronic bearing line and let's just do this let's take it down here and just say okay right to the center of that I'm getting uh, what uh, I'm going to write this down and do them both now. So I have 259 to the knob. 259, I'm reading that right down here, small print. 259 to the knob, and then I'm going on down to this corner, which we've, we're have pretty confident now we understand, but even if we didn't, we could go right here. No, maybe back a hair. Okay, and I'm going to say 185, 185 to the corner. Okay, we got two bear. That's like taking a bearing compass out 
and measuring it with your bearing, well, I mean, your magnetic bearing, except in this case, we're effectively measuring true headings because we have a heading sensor, calibrated heading sensor plugged into the radar, and it's accounting for which way, it knows which way the boat is pointed, so it can then tell us where, where these relative, where these, we can convert these relative measurements to, to true actual measurements. Now let's go back here to our chart and just show how we would plot those. Again, we're seeing it from here in this way, so we have to do it kind of backwards. The first one was what? Oh, 259. Okay, so I'm going to start here at this point here. Okay, and then I'm going to go um, 259. I just want to get that line, 259, and then I'm going to go back this way, right? And that, that's my bearing line right there. In other words, that first EBL told me I'm on that line somewhere right there. Now, the second one was down to here, which was what? Uh, 185. So again, I have to do the trick. I have to start here and go to 185. 185, right there, bang. And then go back. Ah, look at that. That one's not that good. Well, okay, so this is, well, this is all a good illustration of what's going on here. Uh, okay, that's inner. That's good. So that, okay, escape. So, okay, so this illustrates a very good point. This illustrates a very good point, and I, uh, I'm, I've got it worked out. So the trouble, the, and so that's a fix that's right here. So we had three fixes, right? We had one, let me just put this here. I'm going to drop, well, Okay, we have one fix here. That's the intersection of two EBLs. Right? That's a fix right there. Now, and this is range and bearing to a buoy. And this is two range markers. Now, here's the priority of the, of the accuracy of these. This one, if that buoy is in exactly the right spot, then that's a perfectly good fix. But you're never guaranteed of that. So you always try to do something with fixed markers whenever possible. Like these lights here, this, this light is a light on a buoy, this little smear around here. This is a light, this actually the light's a post in the ground here. So that was a good one. But anyway, so that's that kind of fix. This kind of fix is an EBL, and the EBL fixes are always the weakest, and we've just demonstrated that. And, and the fixes that are always the strongest are the intersection of these two ranges. That's measured very precisely with radar. And you see, even over here, when you're looking at the radar, you see, I measured right up to this edge right here. Well, you see, I could be almost anywhere along there. I'm, I'm just measuring the range to that. Likewise here, you see, I don't have to pick exactly a point. I don't have to pick a point I'm looking at. I'm measuring this distance. And so the fix that you get, the fix that you get from two ranges with radar is always your most accurate fix. It's probably... The, Except for like a, well, let me just say, it's probably the most accurate piloting fix you can do uh, on, on your ship. Okay, so there's an illustration of three ways to do it, also illustrating the, the degrees of accuracy. And again, if you want to use this, op you could, everything I did here with this, you could do on the chartlet that you plot out of the radar, uh, out of the radar trainer itself. It's just that you could also get the free program OpenCPN, lo load these free charts, and then play with that electronic charting at the same time.